at the current president that's making his way uh, to New York City. As you know, he's hemorrhaging. Uh, I don't think any. But he's going to be right. He's going to be right there. Street, and I don't think any American, except for the New Yorkers, are going to have to deal with the the traffic caused by three presidents uh, being here. Cares about the president fundraising. I think what's concerning is that you have an officer that was killed, 31 years old, by repeat offender, yeah. a repeat offender with a long rap sheet, um, and the president has not called the family, and he will not be attending the wake. And when you contrast that to the former president, who called the family, and as a result of calling the family, the family invited him to attend the wake and funeral, is making his way there. And I, I just wonder if the press is going to do the thing that they do with Republicans every time something bad happens. Do you have a comment on that? Do you have a comment? Is there going to be a, a comment, a request for comment from the president on why he's not attending? Is there going to be a request for Letitia James, Alvin Bragg, and every other liberal prosecutor or liberal Democrat that believes that we should release repeat offenders back on the street? You know, Lawrence, I don't think we need a comment on this. Yeah. This visual is powerful. Mm -hmm. So powerful that I think this will be a this will be a moment that we'll look back on in this campaign, because the image is stark. You know, Rudy Giuliani, the, the former mayor of this city, um, America's mayor, said, you know, funerals are mandatory, weddings are optional, so funerals true. are mandatory. You have an image of, of Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, and 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 Joe Biden mm -hmm. with celebrities with the elites with people who can afford a hundred thousand dollars for a photo mm -hmm. and then you have Donald Trump grieving with the officers family mm -hmm. grieving with everyone in the city who cares about it. greeting with he's with the people right. and there those 25 million dollars that they raised right there are not going to undo that image it is so stark it is so clear who stands with America's working class, with those who protect us, and who stands with the elites, um, they don't. You don't need. You don't need Such a statement a on point. that. You don't need a statement, Lawrence. Yeah, you, you know, I wonder who's persuaded by celebrity endorsements. You know, like even in 2020, towards the end of, of the campaign cycle, even President Trump got some celebrity endorsements. I think Lil Wayne was one of them and a few others that were in, yeah. like the urban demographic rappers that, that President Trump was trying to make inroads in. You know, there was some energy, but I don't know that it affected the outcome of the election. So when you look at who he's trying to persuade with these celebrities, is it young voters? Because is that going to be squashed by the pro Hamas protesters right outside? So, you know, but, you're bringing in the celebrities, but you're also, you've got young voters that are very turned away because they don't, I think because they're primarily anti war more than they're anti Israel and they're very, uh, uh, they're very malleable. Uh, so I don't know that he's really going to make any, any inroads with celebrities. He's going to read, but his main focus is raising money and he has Lizzo there who's pro Palestinian, pro Hamas, mm -hmm. and she's, she's going to be the entertainment. Uh, and Stephen Colbert will be the who, who advocates for them every single night. Uh, so that's going to be happening. You know what the president could do? He could go down to, I think it's 161st Street, where that kid was, where mm. that man was thrown in front of a subway yeah. Yeah. by that deranged lunatic uh, the same day that Jonathan Tiller was killed. Yeah. He could say, listen, what is the problem here? Why does the governor need National Guard? How do we make this place safe again for Americans? But he doesn't, but I don't think he thinks it's important. But Jonathan Tiller, it was really important. At 31 years old, just three years on the job, mm -hmm. he already had 70 collars, and he came up to a car that was just sitting on the side of the road in the bus lane. Uh, next thing you know, there's a shootout. He gets shot below the, uh, the, below the, uh, the, the, uh, the bulletproof vest. Uh, and sadly, he dies able to get himself to the back of the car. Uh, the video is available. I'm not sure if the public should see it or not. But the guys, the guys that are out, uh, both look, it looks like the guy is going to survive that, that shot Officer Diller, and the other guy is going to go to prison hopefully for life. His nickname was Killer. Last night at Brady Park and Mass Spiegel Park, uh, over a thousand showed up to, to, uh, in a candlelight visual for the memory of Jonathan Diller and the family, including the brother-in-law, uh, Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Diller's brother-in-law, who is also a police officer. Here's a little of his remarks. He loved what he did. He was born to be a cop. He was born to be a hero. He died being a hero. He died doing what he loved. I will forever, forever be a better person because of him. Let's not forget, you guys, this is a dad. He had a yeah. one-year-old child, a, a fairly new bride. I mean, like, this is, this is so tragic on every level. And again, um, shameful, embarrassing that our president couldn't make a 25-mile 
uh, trip. Can, can I just say this? Because the, the, the White House pushback is um, that they weren't invited. And I don't think it's just a symbolic measure of what he claims is his <laughs> greatest asset is being the consoler in chief. That's what he's supposed to be good at. But I think the president, even if you don't go to the funeral of the wake, Call. Call the family. Thank you. Call the family, and not just call the family. Reject the liberal pro uh, policies that are destroying community after community. Because yeah. it's just not New York. It's Chicago. It's Philly. Th this is a national crisis. And I think the leader of the party for the Democratic Party should be able to say on the national say, these policies have hurt Americans on a day-to-day -day basis, and now the criminals feel emboldened to kill cops. Why can't you say that? Moderate Joe, consoler in chief. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, he probably needs to call instead of show up because he can't see him check his watch, you know, when he's on the phone. Oh, that's true. Mm -hmm. uh, if, the, if the wait lasts. Like he did in Afghanistan yeah. when mm -hmm. the 13 bodies came back. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.